All right. Um, thank you very much for joining once again. Um, like I said, um, this is uh, the first session of um, our leadership bootcamp. And I welcome everyone once again from wherever in the world we are joining in from. It's 5.09 here and um, we started already. Yeah. Um, like, I would like to tell you that, um, okay, the waiting time is over and yeah, here you, here you are. Uh, you've signed in for this um, resourceful session um, on leadership and its context. And I can assure you that whatever your expectations are, you are sure to get what you need out of this. Like I can promise you we've got resourceful and exemplary speakers on this um, bootcamp. Please, if you are joining, can you please put up your video and um, stay muted until you are allowed to speak. Thank you. So I can assure you that you uh, will get a hands-on experience on um, leadership and what it entails from these boot camps. I can assure you that whatever your expectations are as a leader and an aspiring one, you are sure to get all that is laid down in your expectations expectation yeah like you can't go without the leadership skill rule and ethics that you've come for all right so um many of us like i said we have questions about what pff is and um, what has led us to um the international leadership bootcamp i can show you that your questions are going to be addressed tonight on this uh, first session, the two hour session of um, the International Leadership Bootcamp. All right, my name is uh, Peter Latono and I'll be moderating for this uh, first session of the bootcamp. All right, I would like you to stick with me as we go through the session. All right, just before we go ahead and um, to assure and to ascertain that we can actually hear me, I would like our two respondents to give me what their expectation is like for this um, bootcamp. I know most of us have expectations for this bootcamp. That's why we've signed up. And I would like to hear from two respondents who are volunteering to give me their expectations towards uh, this bootcamp. All right, I see it how I say Michael's hand raised. So I'll be allowing um, Michael to give me his expectation. It could be the format. When I call you in, you will be giving me your name, where you're calling from, and your expectation. Michael, you're on. All right, hi, everyone. Um, it's, my name is Michael Kewasi from Nigeria by virtual time factor, it's evening, so I'm permitted to greet everyone. Good evening once again. And by profession, I'm a human anatomist. Okay, um, my expectations from this bootcamp specifically is I am a lover of the wealth of knowledge, and then I am an aspiring leader in all ramifications of life. So growing up is always an opportunity that I've always craved for, to hover around people who would actually span into greatness. And then whatever I learned from here has a direct effect on my community, immediate community and the world at large. So basically my expectations here is getting the better part of me, learning about leadership, learning how to be a good leader, not just learning about leadership, but being a good leader. And then tapping from the amiable wealth of knowledge of our hosts and then other guest speakers and other leaders 
because definitely you guys are our role models for me especially. So those are going to be my expectations from this bootcamp. All right, uh, thanks a lot, Michael. That was a great one. I'm actually You're pumped welcome. with that. Thank you. Yeah. I'm pumped You're with welcome. that. Yes. Um, I can see Yodo Francis and so Anakunda Moses. Uh, who should I go with? And now I have Amara Chiku. Amara Chiku, you are a female, right? I want to make a gender parity here. So I would like to accept a female on board for expectations and session. So Amara Chiku, if I'm right by calling you the female gender, can you please share with us what your expectation for this bootcamp is? Thank you. Amara Chiku, you are on. Amara Chiku, are you there? Amara Chiku Mbanigo. Oh, Amara Chiku, are you there? I don't think Amara Chiku can hear me. All right, I don't know. I can see people uh, uh, giving notification on the WhatsApp group that they can't hear me. I don't know what could be wrong. I think you might need to check um, for your audio settings and um, ensure that you have your audio connected to um, Zoom. You allow, um, you give permission to your audio on Zoom. And I think Bob's your uncle with that. Um, I wouldn't know. I, I can't, anybody, anybody still verify if they can hear me right here, right now. Anyone still here who can hear me, please? All right, uh, thank you. All right, so um, since Amarashiko can't hear me currently, or as in um, she is not respondent yet, I would like to take from Odo Francis. Odo Francis, please, can you share your expectation with me or with us um, towards this um, leadership bootcamp? Thank you. You are home now, Francis. Hello, Francis, you need to unmute yourself. I can't hear you. All right, speak on, Francis. Good evening, everyone. My name is Francis. Uh, I'm Nigerian, and I'm studying in India. Currently, it's 9 47 p.m. in India time. So, basically, my expectation about this program is exactly as my brothers have already said, as uh, we all know that uh, leadership skills is one of the most sought skills in the labor market in, in this uh, modern world. And I hope to learn from the experts, or should I say, yeah, the experts for what they, they are going to give us we're going to learn or how to improve our own leadership in order to be more competitive to the labor market. Thank you. All right, that was a great one. Thank you so much, Michael. I think uh, we have more Nigerian brothers here. <laughs> we are so much in the train. Um, I would have loved to take more, but then because of the time, which is very much on our side, sarcastically, I think we have to keep the ball for this uh, first session rolling. Uh, for Pete, I'm sorry I won't be taking on uh, medicine. I think, I'm sorry, we might have another session for that in the next session on the morrow. Thank you very much for showing your interest. I really appreciate it. So we keep the ball rolling. All right, so I'm going to be giving us um, the breakdown of the perks about um, international leadership bootcamp organized by PFF. 
before we have um, our lead person um, in PFF introduce uh, host to PFF and on borders on why we are here, why we're having um, International Leadership Bootcamp. I would like to give us the um, stakeholding notes and um, guiding um, instructions for the bootcamp for the next um, two days we'll be having it. So I would like to enjoin us to please, anytime we are joining this uh, call, um, to always turn over our mic and video because um, uh, we would not like to have um, interference so as to give uh, but other people that are joining a better um, experience uh, with the bootcamp. We don't want anybody to miss out on anything at any point. So, and then I don't know if most of us are already on the WhatsApp group and we found out more about um, the International Leadership Bootcamp and the perks that um, are entailed. Yeah, so one of the things I can guarantee you is that you're going to get certified for joining International Leadership Bootcamp for being on this training. And um, attendance for such is actually compulsory to get certified. So that means uh, you have to be uh, available. You have to join the sessions for the three-day session the bootcamp to be able to get certified. And um, so, um, more, more so as we go on, I would like to we would like to have people share their experiences, their um, daily experiences for the training. So this is day one now. We'd like people to share their experiences as the day go by on the boot camp. And as soon as we are introduced to uh, PFF, we would like us to, we will enjoin us to um, have us close at PFF. Uh, follow us on our, tweet, on our social media handles, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and the likes, and engage our content. That would be an ad song, actually. And, um, and we would like to make us uh, aware that the sessions for the subsequent days will actually uh, be the same time. So we'll be following the same schedule for the day. So keep to your time, please, and don't come late. And more like the last and the most um, important, you know, I didn't put this in any order, but then I would like to attach some more uh, essence to this. Um, this is something that's um, keeping us more engaged and more um, fascinated by the bootcamp. We will have all participants of this bootcamp write a proposal at the end of the training for a leadership event that they can set up in their community. I believe everyone who is joining us from wherever parts uh, in the world have um, their leadership aspirations and visions, and they are looking to get some things done. So uh, this um, perk online is actually um, is actually was um, and, and daring us to get a proposal written to be submitted after the training is done. So what um, what this um, proposal will be fetching is um, um, the, uh, the validity of um, what the leader is going to get done in their community and how impactful the proposal is going to be. So I can tell you that uh, the best three proposals we get at the end of this uh, training, we will be winning an impact fund of uh, $100 each. I can, I can give you an assurance of that. And woohoo, more, that's an... <laughs> That's a like uh, Lee engagement for the three day session we have for this bootcamp. So I will join everyone to stick with us as we move through the sessions of the days. So right about now, I'll be calling on our lead person at PFF to please introduce uh, us to PFF and onboard us properly. So I'll be inviting uh, Uncle Sop our lead person at uh, Precious Fountain Foundation. I'm already giving you an inkling about PFF to give us uh, a talk about PFF and the event that we're having, why we have this event. You're welcome on board, Uncle Sop. Uh, 
All right, Uncle Sop. Yeah, I hope so. I think your mic might be muted. All right, sir. Yeah, I found I'm also muted. <laughs> All right, <laughs> which, All right sir. which is okay. Um, I want to welcome everyone for coming. My name is Christian Sopuruji, and I am the president of Precious Fountain Foundation. I want to thank everyone who has put on, who has worked hard to put on this event. Um, even those working behind the background, and um, thank you, Peter, for hosting. Um, what I want to do now is to quickly explain what PFF does, how you can participate in PFF, and um, what you expect from this International Leadership Bootcamp. Now, um, Precious Fountain Foundation was founded seven years ago with the objective of um, intervening in defective areas of learning in Nigeria, especially. As time went on, we found out that our remits can include other African countries. And again, um, we also found out that not just African countries, but majorly all of the developing world can benefit from the kind of uh, projects and interventions we do at PFF. And so what we've done is, uh, We've expanded our remit not just to be Nigeria specific, but to include other parts of the world as well, majorly developing countries. But we have a very strong presence in Nigeria and in many parts of Africa. We hold events, we, uh, we have an international and a local dimension. Internationally, we are committed to ensuring that Africa develops and that even Africans in the diaspora have a mindset of returning home to do good for the communities they come from. Um, we do um, visits to areas that have defective education. For example, if you check our website, you are going to find um, PFF going to communities to deliver educational materials. We give students books, writing materials. We help to set up scholarships in communities we intervene in defective areas of learning. We train teachers, we train students at whatever level. And that is why, for example, you see we're side by side with this um, International Leadership Bootcamp. We are also doing our essay competition, right? The essay competition's pros, um, purpose is to enable students to think of how to, they can better their community. You know, we are, I think that, and all of us at PFF agree that we cannot develop our countries if we are not leaders. If you don't understand yourself as a leader, you cannot develop your country. And that is what we've been pushing for a while now. And then a very, very specific way of addressing that leadership lacuna, that is that leadership gap in many developing countries is having young people who are majorly students in universities across the world, understand their place as leaders. I expect that majority of the people in this call will be students. And being a student is important to us. At this time, you are making a decision about how to decide for the future of your life. You are thinking, where will I base? What kind of job should I do? Um, what kind of career can I apply myself to? And when you are properly educated on how you are a leader, we expect that this kind of thinking should influence the choices you make. And this brings me to how you can participate in PFF. If you want to be a part of PFF, no matter where you are, we have volunteers from Canada, from Rwanda, from um, Ghana, from the UK, from many parts of the world. What you can do if you want to be a part of PFF is to send us a message. You can write us an email, you can send us a WhatsApp message. We are super approachable. If you speak to any of the hosts here, they can connect you to the PFF um, general group of volunteers. We can help um, think of a, a project within your community. We can help raise funds for you. We can help you. We can benefit from your perspective in the events that we do. So um, if you are somebody that you want to work for us, you want to work with us, you have ideas on projects you have um, that can help your community, 
you are somebody that wants to be a PFF volunteer, write us up, we'll do a short um, meet and greet and we'll join you. We don't insist on um, qualifications because we believe that everybody is inherently important. If you want to join us, write us a message, we'll be able to talk to you. If you also are able to help PFF meet um, funders because we need funds for all the projects we put on, we will really appreciate that. So you can pitch in a support for us, no matter how small it is, and um, we will be able to um, work with you in helping to make that fund translate into a project that will help people um, on the continent or wherever you decide for that to be. So how can you participate with PFF? You can volunteer your services with us. You can be a part of us. You can donate to what PFF does. You can follow us on social media, share our messages, join in our boot camps, in our seminars. You can be a member of PFF in your community, set up a PFF chapter in your university, and many more. Just give us a call, send us a message. You can Insta DM PFF on Instagram. You can send us a message on Twitter. You can send us a message on Facebook. You can send us an email on Precious Fountain Foundation at gmail.com. All of these details, um, our hosts will be sharing them with you. You will have all of that information on our social media channels and how to contact us. Now, for those of you who are, who are also here and you've submitted um, your articles for the AC competition, I want to assure you that we are judging it. Uh, the people in charge and getting to finalize their judging process and they'll be in contact with you very soon. And that brings me to the International Leadership Bootcamp. In this bootcamp, your duty is to participate from now to the end. If you are able to stick around from now to the last day on Saturday, we will give you a certificate showing that you have received this learning. And secondly, if you are able to stick around from now to Saturday, you will be able to be guided on how to develop a proposal for an event in your community. And what we want from the proposal is let it be very, very simple. Let it be easy and doable. If it is a small event in your community, if it is a, an event in your church, in your mosque, in your local gathering, wherever you find yourself, among students in your university, we can give you $100 towards that event. If you need us to also come alongside you and support you by pre preparing flyers, doing things for you that you require, that will enable you to put on a good event, we can do that as well. But what you can be assured of is that at least a hundred dollars will be put towards that event. That is a promise we have for you. We'll guide you on how to write this proposal. We'll guide you on how to think through your proposal so that it's very clear to you. And we also fund you. And that is what um, the ILB today promises. Um, I will ask you to stick around. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask any of us. You can use the chat rooms to send in your messages, we'll respond to them. You can use um, our email addresses. For those of you who are not on the WhatsApp group yet, please try and join the WhatsApp group. And um, our speaker today is a great guy. He's somebody that I've known for a long time and I'm sure with his wealth of leadership experience, he will do a very good job in the topic that we are handling today. So I want you to be expectant, pay attention, have your writing materials ready. We are not grading you. All you have to do at the end is to develop a proposal for an event in order to win the International Leadership Impact Fund. And um, thank you so much. I will leave this, I will revert back to um, Peter now. All right, um, thank you so much. Uh, so that was a great one. Um, now that we've learned about the in and out of PFF and um, why we are here on this event, the International Leadership Bootcamp, I can assure you that uh, to get this book, bootcamp elsewhere, it might come with a cost, but now PFF is giving you this um, gratis free of charge. 
and I will enjoy us to make use of this um, opportunity because it's uh, once in a lifetime, I can assure you that. And um, all the attributes of this uh, bootcamp, I would like you to um, ensure you explore everything. Like Uncle Sob has, has said, we have great stuff loaded for you, wherever you are joining from. And you really want to add PFF close because of opportunities like this. So they won't cross your doorstep unknown, unnoticed. So I can show you, this is the one of um, International Leadership Bootcamp 2023, everyone. And uh, today, like Uncle Sop already said, we have facilitators, we have resource persons who are great leaders and who have actually um, served in one leadership quarters or the other, ready to share us um, virtues and resources on leadership. Like today is an introduction, or let me say the opening ground, the opening floor for the bootcamp. And if you already are familiar with uh, what bootcamp is, uh, bootcamp is a camp and everyone is here to open their boots. So um, that would mean that um, we all here are expected to be loaded to some extent. <laughs> uh, equality actually be, be behest us actually. So it's a camp of leaders and uh, those are aspiring to be. So day one, day two, day two and to day three, which is the grand finale of International Leadership Bootcamp. I can assure you that we are going to be rubbing minds and we're going to be sharing I'm going to be getting values and virtues for our time from our facilitators for these uh, sessions. Yeah, so um, like I already spoke about the order for the sessions, we would like to have um, questions at the end of every session. Each session is supposed to last for two hours and we are supposed to have two, um, we are supposed to have questions at the end of um, each session um, taken by each facilitator we are bringing on, on each um, session we'll be having for the three-day event. So we would like you to have your writing pads and your pens closed so that you note your questions done and your um, reviews. And um, any comments you have to pass will be noted till the facilitator is done. Then we can give you the um, experience to ask your question. Like I, it is just brought to my notice, a four day event. And um, that means something somewhat like a gala event will follow to introduce uh, the winners of our um, impact fund winners and other things that will follow. So like Uncle Sopa said, if you are yet to join us on the WhatsApp group, I would enjoy us to join us on the WhatsApp group to uh, keep track of um, information that will shared um, that will be shared through throughout the length of um, this uh, boot camp. All right, for today, um, I won't uh, waste more time. Without uh, further ado, I will be bringing on board our facilitator, our resource person for today's session. I can tell you that you can't go with without having your introductory expectation met uh, for this session. Most of us who are just aspiring to be leaders will have questions about what leadership entails and what it really means to be a leader. If everyone around you in your community, in your country claims to be a leader, I think this session will give you more uh, compass about um, what leadership is and how to track uh, leadership. So for uh, today's session, uh, we have the opportunity to bring on board Dr. Kimani Karango from Kenya, who will be um, introducing us to leadership and what it entails. All right, can we still hear me, please? Yeah, I can still hear you. I can hear you. All right, thank you so much for the response. So um, Dr. Kimani Karango will be speaking on uh, 
on introduction to leadership and and why become a leader um i believe uh, anyone has joined this uh, boot camp actually has one or two expectations whether they are leader in whatever community they find themselves in whatever society in whatever kind of setting they find themselves and they're looking to abstract uh, the leadership patterns that fits their context from this session so if you're an aspiring leader you don't even know what leadership is all about and you want to get um familiar i believe this session is uh, something you shouldn't uh, lose a track of you want to keep your notes pad close by and your pen at work so dr kimani karangu will be taking us through the introduction to leadership and why become a leader so and um i enjoyed us participants that um to join to to pay attention to uh, the contents that uh, Dr. Kimani will be sharing with us. Um, you will have access to what leadership entails. You will explore with Dr. Kimani the burdens, responsibilities, and duties of a leader, and all essential questions to be um, answered by this teaching. Uh, the, uh, the categorical question why um, are leaders really made or they are born? Um, I think that might want to go with the context of the great man and the traits theory about leadership. The great man theory gives us um, the theory that leaders, leaders are actually born and the traits actually come in the other aspects of it that uh, leadership is made, like leaders are made. So I think uh, Dr. Kimani Karango is going to do justice to that, to that on this session. So here we go. So before we proceed into today's session, I'll be introducing to us uh, Dr. Kimani Karango, our resource person for today's session. So I'll be reading through the profile of Dr. Kimani Karango. I would like us to pay attention because honor actually um, translates to value. So you have to honor the person you are receiving from to get the values. So. Like I read the profile of uh, Dr. Kimani Karangu now. Dr. Kimani Karangu has a PhD from the Faculty of Education, the University of British Columbia. He is currently volunteering as the elected president of the Kenyan community in British Columbia uh, from 2019 to date. And uh, Dr. Kimani is a volunteer, co-host of the African Vibes show at Vancouver, Co-op Radio, CFRO, uh, we stationed at 100.5 FM. Uh, this radio has been in existence since 2018. Dr. Kimani is a member of the African Descent Vancouver Police Department Advisory Committee and is a member of the Black and African Diaspora Communities Advisory Committee, the city of Vancouver. Dr. Kimani has recently retired as a two-term president of the Graduate Student Society, University of British Columbia. Back in Kenya, Dr. Kimani is a former school principal, a former elected district deputy chairperson, Kenya Primary Schools Ed Teachers Association. He is a former district elected deputy chairperson, Kenya Primary School Sports Association. And Dr. Kimani is a former provincial governorship aspirant in Kenya. Everyone here on board at um, International Leadership Bootcamp um, organized by PFF, I introduce to you Dr. Kimani Karangu. Dr. Kimani, I hope you are ready for us on this uh, session and you will do justice to uh, the context of why we are here for this session, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, Peter, for that warm and uh, elaborate introduction. And thank you to you and thank to all of us that are uh, here tonight, today, in the morning. Uh, depending on where you're coming from, I'm calling from uh, Vancouver, and that is uh, 9.43 p.m. And of course, we are always reminded on the lands that we are always uh, getting you to in Canada the land that people enjoy and do play educate themselves is a uh, land that belongs to the indigenous people of canada 
particularly where I am located at the moment, belongs to a group of people called the Maskian people or the First Nations called the Maskiam. And that's where UBC, that is the University of British Columbia, is housed. I therefore acknowledge that. And I all know we are coming from different lands. And I also want to acknowledge that uh, those lands have their own caretakers and we are just supposed to take care of them. And therefore, I'm grateful for that. So uh, Peter uh, or Francis, do I share my screen or somebody is going to share screen on my behalf? All right, Dr. Kimai, I think uh, you have the permission to share your screen, sir. Okay. Thank you. Um, oops. That's not what I wanted. I wanted this. And I hope uh, uh, you can see that. Yes, I can see that, and I hope others too can. OK. So thank you so much. And uh, as I said, I we have two hours. And I think uh, oh, did somebody draw, or am I the one drawing it? Uh, so I, I believe that uh, all of us can see that. And uh, I know we have two hours, but uh, I think now we have almost uh, one hour, 15 minutes uh, to do this. But today I'm so excited and I'm going to make this uh, a presentation quite interactive. And what I mean by that is that I'm not just going to have a monologue here. Uh, we're going to have an interaction whereby I'll be asking questions and you'll also be asking questions. You can type your questions on the chat and um, uh, we'll be able to do that. Francis, uh, you have your hand up, please. Do you have to, something to say? Francis, did I, did I see your hand up? Okay. Uh, so I was saying that uh, we are going to have a very interactive uh, uh, session whereby I'm going to be asking and uh, answering questions. And for you to be effective in doing that, uh, I would request that you type your question on the chat. And I think that is, uh, uh, Peter is going to keep a track of those questions and be able to uh, answer them as they come. And I want now to go straight to our topic uh, of the day. And uh, Peter, if you can keep time of me, uh, because I think uh, my timing now is off since, since simply because 45 minutes are gone. Um, introduction to leadership and that it's where we come with the question why become a leader and uh, I want you to think for a minute why become a leader and I think this is what Uncle Sop has alluded to when he talked about uh, becoming a leader and who is uh, uh, basically who is a leader uh, in our community. So this is the bigger question that uh, I hope by the end of this uh, session you'll be able to answer depending on where and how you look at it, this is the question that you need to answer uh, for yourself. Why become a leader? And just to make sure that we are on the same page, I believe anybody and everybody who is on this call who has come to be you know, trained or to learn something, you are in the path of becoming a leader if you're not a leader already. So, today I'll be doing this short introduction. And I think the introduction has already been taken care of by uh, Peter. Uh, we'll be defining leader, and then we'll look at the qualities of a leader, and then skills of a leader. Uh, of course, we'll look at the responsibility, and then I'll also give you, and I think this is where we get more time to understanding the journey of a leader. And this is more where I bring my own leadership uh, or my journey to leadership as I have had. I know most of you may uh, want to, you know, wonder, you know, leaders are people. I know if I ask you who is, who is a leader in your community or in the world, I'm very sure you give me so many big names, but uh, we'll see how leaders are made and how we become uh, leaders as well. So who is a leader? If you can type that one on the chat, that would be amazing. Who do you think is a leader? And I think uh, we'll be able to get uh, 
uh, to that, that. And to simply, I would say a leader is you and myself. Because in different, you lead your own life. Like you do, you make decisions of your own life. You therefore, you first of all become a leader of yourself before you become a leader in, within the multitude that you are in. And how do you then know that you're a leader? How do you come to the point of like, you know, knowing that, okay, I have led myself, then how can I lead others? And that's now where they become the qualities and skills, or even when we can to understand about the qualities of leadership or who is supposed to be a, a seasoned leader. And this one will come to know when we come to understanding maybe my journey, you pick one or two, th two or three things uh, from them. And we are talking about the quality of uh, a leader they're not just a leader. We are talking about outstanding leaders. Uh, people who are known to be powerful communicators, and I'm very sure you have known them, you have seen them, you have listened to them. That is a skill that they have. They also display uh, an inspirational, whatever they say, whatever they do, however they conduct themselves, it inspires you to either become like them or to lead life like them. I'm very sure, I'm very sure by now you are trying to imagine that person you have seen in the society. And I believe majority of us here could attest to that. You know, majority, I believe, uh, you know, our parents are the first leaders that we have come to know in the world. And some of them, those who are lucky to have them, uh, you know, you can attest to that uh, inspirational aspect, whether it is however African uh, uh, parents do, they are leaders in their own capacity. Another quality of an outstanding leader is what you call integrity. You know, where you have unquestionable way of doing things. Whenever people trust you with a, a thing, a leadership position, you take it like your own self. You, want, you own it and you have a fiduciary responsibility. I mean, you are responsible for that as it would be your own life. And then, so that is the, 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 the quality that you display or somebody displays so that at least they can be known to be outstanding leaders. And then they are motivational. Whenever they, they, they find you down, whenever they speak, whenever they do their things, you feel motivated. You feel like you have been put some new energy to do something that it is uh, important to you and that is going to propel you to the next level. But among all this is the issue of honesty. I know integrity and honesty, they go hand in hand, but there is a degree that makes them, uh, uh, because you need to be honest also, not only to the people that uh, you're showing or you're leading, but also to yourself. Because some people believe things that are not there. You, you think of something in your head and start believing in it, and it is not the honest thing. I know there are so many other qualities of an outstanding leader and those ones you can list in the chat box there. Which other qualities do you think would make an outstanding leader? These are just a few that I, you know, I selected and it's because I do uh, resonate with these uh, quite significant. And I would want to ask yourself there, which one of these do you think you have displayed or which one of these do you think is strong uh, in your own uh, way of doing things? So that at least when you, because I said at the beginning, who is a leader and why become a leader? If you're displaying some of these characters or qualities, therefore, you know, that is the route that you're headed uh, to becoming a quality and outstanding leader in a society. And there are so many skills. We have the soft skills and hard skills of a leader. And today I would want to just pick just a few of the soft skills of a leader. And this is where we are talking about self-awareness. Are you aware of yourself and the people around you, the things that you do? How are they affecting other people and the decisions that they make? Self-awareness. Are you aware of, about you know, what you're saying? When you talk of self-regulation, how well are you able to balance things? How well are you able to regulate the things that you do to the people around you, to the environment around you? How well are you able to, to do this with a balance? 
you know, regulated. This is the skill. Self-motivation. How pushed are you? Like how engaged are you with the things or the positions that you hold, whether within the school, within the religion, within the community, or wherever the place that you are, how motivated are you? How, you know, the enthusiasm, how, how far can you push that? How is it put? But again, as I said, there's soft skill, there's the empathetic element of it. How concerned are you about other people? How far can you go? You know, and of course we have the empathetic and the sympathetic. How far are you going into understanding other people's, um, you know, situations and circumstances and how are you going to get into that and be able to move them to the next level and i believe this is one of the skills that you know one of the soft skills that i'm very sure most of us here have especially coming from africa i'm very sure you must have done something empathetic uh to somebody within your realm of uh, leadership or your day-to-day -day learning and then do you have those advanced social skills and when I talk about the social skills is, you know, within the society and, you know, people talk about how do you differentiate between an animal and a person is because a person have got social skills and whatnot. Like, are you able to listen to other people? Are you able to understand when other people speak or not speak, but because of whatever you are doing, like to what extent do you have those uh, skills to even when you find people uh, in commotion, how well are you able to bring them down and make them understand each other as human beings? You know, those advanced, because they're social skills, but how do you advance them? Are you able to make friends and maintain them? And for how long? How are you able to define or identify a fake friend from a real one? Because they're there. You will need so, this soft skill of, you know, what I'm called uh, uh, advanced social uh, skills and whatnot. And when we move uh, on, we find that there are so many responsibilities as a leader. You know, what are some of the responsibilities and duties of a leader? And this, I was, you know, quite um, engaged and uh, uh, moved by the words of Witten, who says, a leaders, as leaders, you have a responsibility to your people, whether you're working in a company or a team, and to yourself to be the best leader you can be. Leading people is a privilege, of course, and a burden at the same time. And your willingness to accept both is what makes you special. The things that I underlined here is leading people, a uh, privilege and a burden. Because you understand uh, today, most of the things that we are claiming, whether you talk about inflation, you're talking about corruption, we're talking about um, you know, you know, broken infrastructure or any systems, we are looking at the leaders that we have put at the helm to lead us. And is it because they are not being responsible of what they're supposed to do? And you, because you're becoming a leader, these are some of the things that you need to know. And that's why I touched on this, uh, on the skills, the qualities, and the responsibility. Without uh, putting them into bullet points, but giving you a statement of what it is that will make you become, uh, you know, it is a privilege because everybody can be given opportunity to, but what do you do with that privilege? It is a burden. How do you make it less? For those who are um, uh, maybe go to the church or something, uh, they call, uh, they, they talk of the burden, maybe um, uh, the son of uh, it's the son of God, yeah, uh, was given a, a cross to, to go and have it uh, act as a crucifixion site. It is a burden he carried for, for, I don't know, for himself or for others, but I'm trying to bring a metaphorical idea that, you know, it is being a, you have to sacrifice. That's, that's the point I'm trying to make here. You have to sacrifice for others to benefit. And that's what it is a privilege. And it is a privilege because it is not a right. It's therefore you choose whether you want it or not. That's why it is a privilege. And because if it's a right, everybody has the right to lead, but it is not. It is a privilege that you get and how you do it 
it all depends on how you do and this is what you can look more about uh Witten is a is a um a leader's coach who can who take who talks more about uh you know being a leader and you know gives gives too much about his own life and how he has come to where he is at day but again please if you have any questions continue putting them there and uh we'll be able to answer all these questions uh, later or comments if you have any and if i'm too fast let me know i can slow down but again i'm looking at the time as well okay um Moving forward, let's now get the nitty gritties of who I am and how I have come to be. Uh, and I will explain, and I know I've, uh, uh, I'm a very visual person. So I'll, most of these things I'm going to, I'm going to explain my journey in photos, in pictures. And I know most of them uh, are relatable and you can always ask a question. I might not be able to tell you who and, you know, I know everybody who is uh, going to be in my selection because I have a huge album, but I selected a few. So my journey to leadership, if I may say so, and if you allow me, I may come to this slide later on, uh, but uh, let me try to say, uh, I chose, I have been into many leadership positions and uh, I selected a few that may resonate with you so that at least you see whether the leaders are made or born or created let's see so uh right from when i was in uh, primary school you know some people thought that i would be good in their leadership and both teachers and students they elected me to be their class monitor sorry uh and then uh in high school uh i was also again put into the leadership where i became the school captain in college i was very um sporty and uh, you know became the sports officer of course the, all these especially from college these are elective serious or elective where you campaign and uh, you go on top of cars and you make a lot of billboards and all that and uh but i did not give money because i did not have the time uh and then when i became a teacher again i was given a department to lead where i was in charge of student welfare and then I graduated and became, I was uh, the head of the school where I was leading. And then I left Kenya and I thought I was going to start a new life in Canada. And uh, after a few months of being here, I, you know, although some of these things, as I grew up and I could see, you know, people have trust in me, they can see things that mostly maybe I couldn't see that I need to be there with them. Because sometimes I'm very quiet, sometimes I'm very vocal, but uh, maybe having that balance, they could see something in me that sometimes I could not see in them. And uh, I, you know, elected the student leader as, you know, it was uh, articulated in the introduction. Uh, so I was, you know, managing finances, you know, honesty and integrity of a million and so budget, managing that and then became the president whereby I had to make policies, I had to interpret them, I had to be the leader that I could, leading about 11,000 uh, students, both the masters and PhDs. And then uh, I have been a community leader, I uh, think for the longest now, since 20, I believe 19, whereby, you know, I forming a community, I mean, a community that was formed in 20, 2006, died off, but I thought that it is important that we continue uh, harnessing whatever it was supposed to be. And I think all these things that I've been doing, they have been honing my leadership skills because they only make it better. And now the point I talked about, leadership is all about privilege and they have their burdens that, you know, and that's a responsibility. It is what you do that will make people see that you deserve to lead them. You will deserve to be at the helm because you make sound decisions, you're honest, your integrity is unquestionable, and you motivate people to become. Because some of these things, they're not paid, they are voluntary. Uh, but why do you do that? Because you have a responsibility to the humankind. You know, you want to make, uh, I believe in a philosophy of do good and go your way or leave a place better than you found it. And it is the same uh, when it comes to my leadership as well. So I, over time, I have made a few uh, networks. Uh, and of course, I will say, you know, as a leader, you ask yourself, you know, because the moment you put, you find yourself in a place of leadership, 
you might you meet with other leaders and that's where you start now growing your ideas you stop becoming somebody who does not trust in themselves but you now start becoming somebody who can also offer leadership to other people even amongst the leaders and over time what ha that happens as you make this you make networks i'm very sure you have seen the spider and how it makes its own web you know from one string to another and then eventually it makes a very beautiful thing it is the same thing once you and i'm very sure today most of you that are here and i'm happy that you have a whatsapp group make it work for you you never know where you'd go you know and uncle, uncle sop can attest to that we, we met and we thought maybe we are brothers from different uh mothers and fathers in different continents but it it is the chemistry that goes up because you have you share a lot of um, uh, this quality. So I have, you know, the, as it was said, you know, the African Vibe Collective. I have a group of uh, people there. I'm about to retire from that. The Kenyan community here, uh, you know, over 1,000, over 5,000 people here uh, that had no direction, put them in one direction, and now we are moving in the same direction that is very, very beneficial. I just attested to the Graduate Student Society, and this is very competitive for those who are in high uh, for those who are in college. And... Um, universities you know what it is that um, it takes to become a student leader you have to seriously be and the vancouver police department that is uh you know the equivalent of the police that you have in your village i do advise them on issues many issues i never applied for this position they came for me and told me kimani we have seen whatever you're doing in the village would you please not in the village i village in this sense vancouver and they were like um would you please be you know kind enough to join our team to advise us on how you're doing our things. And I'm like, oh yeah, why not? So I joined them. And I've also created, uh, so that is uh, on security issues. I've also created student uh, networks with the high commissions, especially here in Canada, that is in Ottawa, and also back home where I have you know, uh, elected, because sometimes when you want things done, you have to get in touch with the Kenyan uh, uh, leadership. So if you're Nigeria, you're in Rwanda, you're in Uganda, you know, meet all. I have been uh, um, in meetings with all these leaders. Uh, sometimes I find myself there because it is a privilege. You know, people put you in that position and you make it whatever you want to make it. So political leaders, peacemakers, because and uh, academics, that is people in academia and all that. Here in BC, I have tried as much as possible to also create networks uh, with the British Columbia leadership, that is the members of parliament, the mayors, members of legislature, uh, and also the city mayors, and, you know, moving forward. And I'll, I'll show you a few of them uh, with the time as we move forward after that. So allow me to go to the slide that I showed you first, this one. Uh, this here uh, is one of my mentors. He is uh, um, a musician a uh, leader and a presidential aspirant for Kenya 2027 was in 2022. He is legally blind and you can always check him out. He's called Ruben Kigame. Uh, he called me once he thought he heard that I was in Kenya that we can speak and talk about the way forward for country Kenya. And this is because I had put myself forward for elective position and we have had very serious talks about him. It is about creating networks without making too much noise. Let other people realize, know you that you're there because of the things that you do. Because the people that you touch, the people that you talk to, the people that you influence, the people that you motivate will always let other people know about you. Good. On this other side, for those who are Kenyan, uh, this is a delegate that I was hosting uh, from Kenya. Uh, from the office of the president and my leadership team here in uh, Vancouver. So there are the people from the office of the president there, there are permanent secretaries in the office there, and my fellow leaders here and other immigrant uh, uh, immigration officers uh, from Ottawa, uh, from the Americas here, but all connected because of the things that I said initially, the Kenyan community in British Columbia can be seen for short. So moving forward, uh, it is good as a leader. And how do you know that you become a leader? You know, once you start trusting in yourself. Here, this uh, photo shows, and you know, when I started like feeling there is something in me that uh, need to be utilized by other people. 
Uh, the person I'm greeting here as a young man, as you can see, I was young as many of you here, now that I'm old and my hair has grown big, uh, is the current permanent, uh, I think, cabinet, the, the prime secretary cabinet, like a prime minister, quote unquote, in Kenya. Then that was in 2012. But importantly, is the person who is next to me, to my right there. She was Sister Masha and my immediate boss. She used to be my principal when I was the head of the department. But now we are lining up as equals. She was the head of her school and I was the head of my school too. That is called believing in yourself. When people elevate you, you have to elevate yourself, believe in yourself and gather what I call support. And that's why you be, that's how you become a leader. And that's why you also become a leader to believe in yourself. Because if you don't believe in yourself, you wait for so long for people to believe in you. You believe in yourself for other people to believe in you. However, some of these things are not um, automatic. It is you to believe in them and other people see that and they push you forward. So you can imagine, I don't know how many people here have, have got employment, but how can you stay side by side to your immediate boss who like was, no, please don't go because she tried as much as possible to tell me, please Kimani, don't go anywhere. I need you here. But other people are like, no, 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 Kimani, that is not the place you need to go. You need to go elsewhere. And it's good that I made the decision of going because I don't think if I remained there, I would have been nurtured. I would have honed my leadership skills to whatever I am today. I wouldn't be even be talking to you today. So that's how, when I say so, so it means, okay. And of course, yeah, I don't know whether you can see some familiar faces. Of course, Uncle Sop is here and the delegate from what we call the the African Vibes Collective Show. These are a network of people uh, that I met, the, 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 um, the gentleman on the end there, our grandpa, uh, who, has, who has got very, you know, very interesting skills in, of bringing people together and making sure that we all grow together. So in essence, it is the diversity as a leader you must also embrace a diversity and be able to listen. You must not always lead. You must also be willing to be led at some point. And that is all what is uh, depicted in these photos. And these are, you know, both leadership and the connections and the networks that have continued uh, to grow. And of course, we are all smiling and laughing because we're in a restaurant waiting for food. So don't judge it so hard. Um, as a leader, you must also know uh, where you become. You have not only the, 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 you know, other than the privilege you have and the responsibility, you also have a civic responsibility because if you're not making, uh, if you're not making um, a change in your community, because you could make a change for yourself, but if you're not making a change in the community, then that might be maybe the wrong way to go. So you must be aware as I say, self-awareness, you know, the civic responsibility that you may have. For example, when it comes to the time to make decisions in your country, you must be at the forefront because that is what determines your life, your future, and the future of those people around you. So I'm talking about civic education here because, uh, you know, during elections, um, I believe as a person, as a leader that I am, I must mobilize people to go to make a decision, whether they vote the way I vote, it is, a, it, is, it is not my business. My business is they go and exercise their, their duty to voting. And you know whether they go vote for their, their candidate, that is their own problem, but they must exercise that democratic right. So how do you mobilize them? Is it a civic, is it a civic responsibility that you do have as a person uh, moving forward? And uh, of course, uh, you, you know, connecting and networking, not only the people that you will be always be comfortable with. No, when you're creating as a leader, there are many places, there are many things that you go and, uh, you know, people that you meet, people that have come to replace you and people that will come to, you know, be in your positions in the future. For example, in this case, uh, um, you know, the person who took over from myself, uh, that is Sam here, uh, became the next uh, president of the UBC uh, Registering Society. 
we are in a place that we are seeing off the 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 president of uh, the university going together and joined with us here you know after we made our own uh, uh submissions some people approached us and I said, please can we have a photo with you and i read, uh, uh, later i came to realize those we are dignitaries from different uh, countries they were like uh, what we call it, ambassadors from different countries and like they could see there are things that are there now we're good friends and we continue um helping each other in the way that you do so it's the connection that you make wherever you go leave a, a, a mark a legacy so that at least people will not only say kimani was here but they will always feel your presence there as a leader uh, other than having um the the connections you also have to have mentors who are the people that will guide you into becoming whatever you want to become because again i know most of you here the 58 or you the the 60 people of you here is that uh, you know you're also looking for as i said initially remember the characteristics and the qualities and the skills we talked about you will always those you see something in somebody and you, this is what i want and that has always been my, you know, I, I run to that and I say, this is it that I want. And I have to selectively choose the people that will, you know, because it, again, it's not everybody who can be or would welcome you or would embrace you uh, to mentor you to become a leader. Even myself having, I am, though I, there is a point that I could be considered seasoned, especially when I come to men, my mentors. Um, this uh, to my left, uh, his name is Yash Palgai. Uh, he actually crafted the Kenyan constitution of 2010. He's Kenyan, uh, but uh, of a different um, uh, ethnicity, but he's Kenyan. And uh, he's, been, he's been my mentor for a long time and he wanted me to become a lawyer like Uncle Sob, but uh, I think he's winning. I might be joining law school soon. Uh, I, I believe my children will come to inherit so many certificates because I think I've been in school forever, but it's good. So, and I think you can see, you know, he's, he's old and uh, he has very seasoned uh, ideas to offer. Again, here we have a serious activist uh, from uh, Kenya. He's called uh, Bonface Mwangi. And uh, here is my grandpa called Sultan Somji. Uh, he is also, again, somebody who has, uh, put me under his wings. He's a peacemaker. Uh, he's an ethnographer within the Africa. He has established so many peace museums in Africa. And I like the way he looks at Africa and problems of Africa. Because I get, as a leader, you must always, you are leading people either into problems or into solving problems. So the people that will be behind you will either help you do one of the two. You create the problems or you solve them. And that's why you, whenever you're uh, selecting your mentors, you have to be very keen on who becomes your mentor. Uh, more mentors, uh, as I said, that is Somji. And for those who are in academia, you will notice one person by the name Professor Ngoge Wadhyongo. He's written so many books and he had this admiration or when he was young of um, uh, was Chinua Achebe. He, in the 1960s, you know, as he tells me, he is the one who inspired him to write his first novel that, uh, uh, you know, made him go and go close to Chinua. And now I think they are now even competing on the same pedestals. So again, you can see, you know, he tells me and I, you follow that uh, kind of a thing. And I know some of you, as I said, you know, you identify what is it that I can see in this person that can lead me, that can help me become. And uh, here I am seated with the former Chief Justice of Kenya, who is uh, also has, uh, uh, you know, it's been my mentor uh, for a long time. Again, he's uh, as, you know, Chief Justice, lawyer and all that. He also uh, has mentored me in not only in uh, legal ways, but also in African tradition way of becoming a leader. Like how is it that you're supposed to become a leader in the African traditional way, other than the modern way of where people want to amass wealth and to become colonizers of the fellow people. How can you lead people in justice? How can you lead people in the light? And the qualities that display, again, as I said, uh, it is easy to identify some of these people. But again, it is not everybody who is going to welcome you because some of them 
may also have their own reservations. But he wants me, and he gave me the book, The Beacons of Judiciary, how to transform the country called Kenya. Because again, you must have the vision. You, you, you know, you not only continue being a leader of a school, you graduate. You, as I showed you, I graduated from you know class monitor to school to high school to student leader. And I believe now I am now enough, not only now to lead this very crafted um, or institutionalized groups of people, I am now ready to face now the bigger challenge of a community and other bigger responsibilities. And you have to create that network of people that you trust and people that you can mentor, people that you can always go back to when you have uh, faced a challenge. Uh, if, well, if within the community, as you can tell, you know, uh, as I said, you know, we have had these people who want us to, you know, who want to put us behind or uh, under their armpits and, you know, under their wings and we can fly together, together. So they try to uh, bring us together. So uh, I've been recognized by a number of them. And this is just, uh, uh, you know, just to mention a few where we're talking and uh, talking to the members of parliament because these are members of parliament and uh, MLAs of uh, British Columbia and explaining to them what it is that we want or want to do. And I do not just go there because I am me. No, it is because I represent a voice the voice of Kenyans, the voice of students, the voice of black people, the voice of young people. Am I young? You have to decide that one. But I feel young anyway, uh, but I'm old. That's uh, the reality. Uh, so yes, so, and this is, you have to create the networks and the networks, you don't have to force them. They have to come for you sometimes. Sometimes you chase them and then you know when to stop. As Ken Rogers say, you know when to run and when to stop and when to walk. So. Let people also note you when you in your community because of the things that we said at the beginning there. Like, uh, how do you, how do you put, how do you position yourself within the community? How people identify you? Do they see a leader in you, or not? And it is, it depends with how you harness yourself and you package yourself. Uh, it's also as a leader, and why become a leader is because you want to stand with others. I remember this day uh, with my Ghanaian friend here, Imano. Uh, you know, they had just killed George Floyd. This was on twenty fifth uh, of May, twenty twenty, and we were so aggrieved by that. So we had to go, and of course, you know, it was the the voice. And immediately after that, I had to give my own experiences as a graduate uh, student uh, in the in the country that neighbors, people who do not have too much uh, to offer, especially to black men, black males in North America. So you can see becoming a leader, you, you have to know when to, to do your things and to connect uh, with all these people. And I, this is again, the civic duty. Uh, you know, when I realized that we had so many things that are missing, uh, especially when it comes to uh, our civic say, Kenyans in diaspora, we needed to vote. But how do we vote? And it has never happened before. I had to call in and say, you know, we need to have a conversation. And I'm happy that we call the, the commissioners of the equivalent of the, the, the electron commission in Kenya. And they all came here and we had a conversation and we were allowed to vote from here. It, is, it depends on how convincing as a leader can you be, not only to the people who knows you, but people whom you can antagonize at any point. Are you able to be listened to? Do you have content, quality content that they can listen to and adhere to uh, moving forward. And of course, within the community, uh, especially when, you know, when we are in, in, in say, of, for example, if you're in Africa, in Kenya, in Nigeria, I have had people talk about, oh, Yoruba, uh, uh, the other um, Igbo or Kenya, Kikuyu, Luo, whatever it is. When you, in the diaspora, you don't talk up in those lines, although I have seen people talk, we talk of, uh, countries, South Africans, Nigerians, and all that. How well are you able to become that kind of a person who is self-aware and then can bring people around them together to know that they have a similar cause? So this is myself with my deputy then and the president of the South African Association and their deputy having a Kenyan celebration together and trying to create a joint meeting uh, for our communities to get together because as a leader you must also be able to mobilize and motivate people to uh becoming how well are you able to do that however 
when you're doing all these things, you must know who is it that I need to trust. Even your mentors, even the networks that you create, trust is very important because the ones trust is broken, you never get it uh, back. And that's why you remember when we talk about honesty as one of the, uh, uh, you know, one of the qualities of a leader, you, you yourself, are you able to be trusted? And for how long can you be trusted and who can trust you? Uh, I selected a few. I know there are many people that I do trust uh, with things. There are things that I don't trust anybody, even you know, with anything. You know, like the way I don't trust this internet here can survive. But uh, that is me doubting, not me trusting it. It's me doubting. But there are people that I can not trust with information or with the things that I do every day. However, are the people on the other side able to do the same to me? I believe so. For example, this is uh, my friend, uh, John, uh, Ambassador John Lanyasunya, was a long-serving uh, a Kenyan commissioner in Canada. And he saw it from a distance. And he approached me and he told me a few things that made me think of myself differently and were able to create this network uh, here uh, significantly, back here in, in Kenya as well. And uh, this is a network of my, this is John Ede, and uh, uh, the the uh, school uh, university administration, including the vice uh, the vice chancellor, that is the president of the university. If I get my yeah, that one, uh, he has moved to Michigan University. That's where he is, and of course, uh, my brothers in crime here. Unfortunately, uh, me one of them is now deceased. May his soul continue resting in peace. The night guy. His name is Kevin, but these are the network people that I trusted and uh, we continue doing together. And of course, taking your time to reflect on who is it that I need to trust? Because again, you have many things that you need to, as a leader, you do not again uh, have to trust everybody and not everybody has to trust you. But again, you have to be honest, not only with them, but also with yourself on the things that you say you do every single uh, day. So when you move from that, uh, important once you create the trust and the people around you, the network you have already created. Now you, again, you have now to go to the sub support system. As a you know, again, all these are telling you who are these people that need to be within my circumference that will always support me whenever I am down. And here you find that uh, I have a, a group of uh, people. Some of them are you know from the political arena, uh, like the 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 photo on that side. And then I have uh, we have seen him again in the other photo that was my brother um, uh, in Canada. We met way 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 back in Kenya when I used not to have uh, uh, when I used to have an airport on my head. And of course, the students these are guys that you know family and people that you can you know you see them grow. Now they're big boys. If they see this photo, they might take me to the International Criminal Court of Justice because I'm not doing justice to their photo. They're not big boys like yourselves there, but they have been of support. They have been giving me the momentum to move forward because of the dreams that they have. And I feel as I support them to become, they support me to be continue to be what I have. And I also support myself by doing things that I like gardening and all that. You also have to identify the things that you also need to do to support yourself physically, mentally. And uh, as I said, Leading is a privilege and it is a burden. And it is balancing between the two that makes you special. How are you able to balance all these things as a leader? And as an upcoming leader, this might sound overwhelming, but uh, I'm happy that this is happening because growing up, I did not experiencing, I did not experience anything of this nature. I never attended to any boot camp. I just found myself becoming. So I consider myself quite organic, but it is, you're very privileged to have this information coming from. And this is continuation of the support system. As I said, you know, uh, I'm, uh, I'm with the, the mayor there, the Burnaby uh, city mayor there, uh, Mike. And of course the student around me here, uh, they, I used to, to discipline them and teach them you know and now we are having some good time there uh fellow students that are you know bringing them together and trying to uh forge life together as well you know very support close people not everybody against close people but diverse people 
and of course here my professor and the high commissioner as well and the other members of the community uh, becoming my support system and the president uh, of the university there and the people that we started my PhD with. Very important people. Uh, we started, uh, uh, we were 10, but by the time we were getting this photo, we were six. Four of them had uh, given up. And so far, so good myself and uh, the lady here, uh, she, uh, we've graduated and uh, the rest are coming and we are still supporting them to be uh, live. You know, uh, we have Naok here from Japan. We have Matthew from England. We have Maria from Mexico, Kiera from Canada and uh, Russia as well. And then we have Scott there uh, from Canada as well. And of course, you as uh, truly are from uh, the continent of Kenya. How diverse, that is how uh, classes are formed and all that. So a class of 10, we call ourselves a cohort and we're still uh, moving together. From 2017, um, pushing together uh, as a group of people, support system, very important. And the reason why I have uh, the president of the university here is because, um, you know, when I was the president of the Graduate Student Society, he was very instrumental in supporting not only my me as a person, but also the ideas that I brought forward so that the burden can be shared between myself and himself. It was a shared burden. So again, you have to like know as a leader, when do I share my burden to other people? But again, you don't just share that burden to anybody. It has to be people that you trust, the network that you have created uh, within uh, yourself. And then it is always good to interact with people. Brass, uh, you know, go brushing shoulders with whenever you are invited to leadership, you know, go for some opportunities, for example, and interact with the people, for example. Here, um, there was a time there, there was in Canada, there was the Women Leadership Conference. And uh, it, they, they, one of the key speakers, I think, was the president of Ghana, uh, Nana. And then there was a president of Kenya who is with me here and uh, invited me to have a chat and tell him. Uh, about some of the things. There were, there were so many other people that he could in, have invited uh, that have been in Canada for long, but he invited me to have a chat with him uh, and about the student life and also the community uh, aspect of it. Or courtesy of the high commissioner who had whispered, again, uh, good words to the president then. And from there, the rest is history, the good friends. And of course, the members of parliament in Kenya as well. And this is the current speaker of the National Assembly of Kenya. And of course, you are. So it is important, the people that you interact with, let them go with a good impression and the potential that you have as a leader. Some of us, you know, some of us do think we are leaders, but we are not yet honed well to become leaders because of the things maybe whenever, you know, let be introduced, give be given an opportunity to, to speak, and let your qualities, as I speak, I, I spoke about them at the beginning, let them speak for yourself. You don't have to say nothing. Sometimes people will identify, will realize this is the person we're looking for, even without saying anything. And then, of course, uh, I have, you know, even before then, you know, I had um, had conversations with the position leader currently. That is Ray Laudinga, for those who are familiar, uh, my friend, and also the then Vice President uh, Kalonzo Omosioka in Kenya. It's about handshakes and interactions as a young person and, you know, having that zeal to want to be. Sometimes you find yourself in situations <laughs> by coincidence, but I, sometimes I don't believe in coincidences because um, how you come to meet other people uh, of importance yeah, that can help you. Lead. And then... Uh, after you have done all those things, sometimes you need to take initiatives. For example, in this case, you know, as I said, you know, uh, you know what happened with George Floyd in 2020, you know, sometimes it's good to take initiative and talking to authority of what needs to happen and what is happening. So here we are uh, getting the training uh, of being, um, you know, you know, how can you take, how can you protect yourself? when you come in the village and people are not very nice to you and uh, you have to train yourself uh, in the community, how to take care of self, how to use tools and all that in the legal way. Again, the key thing here is legal way. So all these things, it is not Photoshop, it's nothing. This is the real thing. Like 
how do you become uh, a formidable pattern in the community? As a leader, you have to take initiative. Go for the things that you think will change not only you, but your community at large. The things that will help you talk to authority with authority, being authoritative and leading from the front. And uh, uh, this is another group of um, people that uh, as a leader, uh, we have created a group of uh, leaders. Uh, all these are community leaders uh, from African communities, from uh, Morocco uh, to Mauritius, uh, to Sierra Leone, to Burundi, to South Africa, to Somalia, to Sudan. Yeah, all these people. We've come under uh, Rwanda, I didn't, uh, uh, Ezra is from Rwanda here. We all have these things we call together and we are forming um, the you know teams so that we can be able to, to show our people behind the scene what is important. And finally, you must also choose to have fun as a leader. It must not be so gloomy whenever you have to lead your life. It has to be fun. Uh, and to say, and you can see I'm having fun uh, myself. And I want to stop there and uh, ask if there are any questions or any comments and uh, give it back to you, Peter, uh, because I believe that is it uh, from my end. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Kimani. You have done a whole deal of uh, justice to uh, the context of today's um, session. I really appreciate you personally. You got Thank you. my questions met. Thank you so much. So right now we'll be taking our uh, questions and comments. So uh, if you have your questions, I would like you to put them up now in the chat box as I expect them and Dr. Kimani is ready to answer your questions. Um, I think um, right through the session of uh, Dr. Kimani, we had a question up. Uh, I think uh, this was from um, Sadisu Abdullahi. Uh, he asked the question, about the qualities of uh, leadership, whether it depended on people being led or the geographical location where the leader is in. So if um, Sadiso Abdullah is still on, can they come on with your mic um, unmuted to ask your question, please? So that uh, Dr. Kimani can um, answer your question um, on the spot. Thank you. Sadiso Abdullah, you are on now. Hello, sir. Yeah. So my question is that uh, does the quality of uh, depends on the geographical location or the inlet? For example, um, does the qualities of ship needed by person? who is a leader in Nigeria differs from someone he, who is a leader in, for example, America? That's my question, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. So if I got you right, uh, Sadisu, you're asking about uh, the qualities of leader, uh, leadership, uh, you know, depend on the geographical uh, positioning of an individual? Yes, sir. That's, that's it. Okay, good. Um, you know, I would say yes and no. And I would say yes in the context of the uh, our culture and our tradition uh, upbringing. And also the differentiation or the, the way we understand uh, things. And this will be, you know, barely because of our cultural differences. But when you talk about, say, for example, you're talking about person being honest you know there are things that would be dishonest to do back home but they are honest to do elsewhere so that would be a cultural idea but again the ideology of doing good to other people stands so geographical it is the same thing because when you talk about say like for example um uh because here we we don't talk about tribal things here we talk about racism which is almost a similar thing you know, it's only given a different name. So 
context is important. It is important to understand the context under which we are operating and under which uh, things are happening. So that's why I said yes. And no, I would say it's because, you know, when you understand, you know, a wrong thing is a wrong thing, irrespective of where you are, it becomes wrong. For example, if you know that you're going to discriminate about or somebody or you're going to be corrupt, you know, here corruption is not called corruption, not that there isn't corruption, but it is, you know, somebody would say, you know, um, call it some sort of facilitation, but of course it is inappropriate facilitation where we, we, we give them the names, but by the end of the, the spirit of whatever you're doing is wrong. So I would say yes or no, but again, it all depends with, um, uh, you know, our own cultural uh, understanding of some of these things uh, uh, from uh, our places. So I think maybe that may address that one, Sadisu. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. All right, Sadisu, I believe your question was uh, currently answered by Dr. Kimani. All right, sir. Uh, so that's that about that. We move on to the next question. And this is from um, Hamos Wayo. Please, if your hand is put up actually to ask a question, you can please drop, drop your question in the chat box. Um, within the lapse of our time, we will take the questions and you will you will be called upon when your question is um, up. Thank you so much. So the next question is um, from Amos Wayo. Why do leaders feel? Amos Wayo, I, I'm able to give you the floor to um, especially on um, this uh, general question, why do leaders feel? Amos, you are up. Amos, why are you? Amos, are you there? All right, uh, I think Amos is not um, up to talk. I think Dr. Kimani can just have a comment on that. Um, why do leaders feel? And I think um, Hemos Wayo would get um, the contents of the question of the answer later. Dr. Kimani, any why do leaders fail? <laughs> yeah, those are not leaders. Leaders don't fail. Those are crooks that assume positions of leadership. It is because because of what I talked, I talked about. Being a leader is a privilege and it has to come with a burden. And how you lead, how you break down the burden so that it is not overwhelming you makes you the special one. And if people have not, they do not understand the essence of the burden or they do not understand the magnitude of the burden they are having on their shoulders, then they are overwhelmed and of course they will fail. And there, is, there are many reasons why, again, even good leaders in your own perspective, they might fail. And it is because of the things that I have elaborated. Who is around them? Who is their support system? Whom do they trust? Because again, as a leader, again, you must know how to delegate things. You must not do everything by yourself. You even a house is supported by pillars. And how you select those pillars to build your house, the materials you select to build your house, the people you select to build that house of yours, depend, the, the final product depends on that process. So if you miss one of these steps and you don't, and if you maybe, you know, you miss the step and you don't do anything about it, then you are doomed to fail as a leader. So that is, you know, that is the, the, the book looking at it. But when you look at the community perspective, some leaders fail by design. And not that they fail, it's because the people that they lead are the failures. For example, when I come to your village and I want a political position, for example, but what you want from me is the money that I have so that it can give me the thing. That is not me convincing you to give me a position. That is me buying whatever you have and you selling whatever you have. So the business ends there. You cannot come to ask me things later. I bought, and it's a business, it's a willing seller, willing buyer. And that business is deal, it's a deal done. And because of our insincerity, our dishonesty, and this is now not one person, but pe both people, you know, maybe I got my money dubiously, 
and I come and start, uh, you know, dishing out to you, of course, I am the bigger con here, but you accepting, not knowing uh, what I'm doing behind the scene now makes you culpable of that. And this one has been, you know, generated for many years. And I, you know, and especially giving an example, say, of the African content, whereby majority of us, you know, because, you know, we live within the legacies of colonization. Because some people, I know some people don't like the idea of colonization, but the legacy, I'm not talking about the colonization, so I'm talking about the legacy of colonization, the principles and the philosophies of colonization. There are people who have mastered that art and they have continued to thrive in it where they oppress other people and these people will always see as these people are their saviors. But if you have the qualities and you are able to identify the things that we have talked to today, you'll be able to know who people who are the people that need to be at the forefront leading you and that's the way i said how can you identify a leader from the multitude is this a clown or is it a, a real person because it doesn't matter and you will know them because even if you took somebody say for example i had somebody say if you took a clown and put them in the palace to be the king or whatever it doesn't the palace does not continue being a palace it becomes a circus and what do you expect from that? This failure. So that is the long and the short way of why do leaders fail? They fail in two ways, as I said. There is no, it, they, they, you know, they, they did not deserve to be in that uh, position or they bought the positions. And that, of course, also makes them not fit for that position because it is not a serious privilege. And if they get into that position, and if they do not understand the, the burden that comes to that position, of course, they're doomed to fail. It's like when you get into a classroom and you're not prepared for an exam, you don't expect to fail. You don't expect to excel. You will guess, but your guesses might not be right. So I, I think I, I, you know, I will leave it for there, but I'll, you know, um, I'm happy to, 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 go, to go to the next question. All right, uh, Dr. Kimani, thanks for that. Uh, I think that did justice to um, uh, the question. Um, then we move to the next question um, from um, Okay, from this question is from Tewasa Michael and um, mm -hmm. I don't know where Tawasa Michael is joining from, but we would like to take more questions from uh, non-Nigerians because I think we have more Nigerians actually bombard us with questions on this session. So the question is, um, how do you balance in building trust and still keeping vital information in leadership grooming? Like uh, you've shared with us uh, how to bank on um, um, close-knit uh, leaders, people that you can always uh, refer to and can always um, get to in terms of instructions and guidance. So I think Michael is uh, looking to get information out to build trust uh, with these people and to keep vital information uh, in leadership grooming. So um, over to you, sir. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Peter, for that. And thank you so much for that question, Michael, as well. Uh, yes, uh, as a leader, and I think, um, you know, in leadership, both the leader and the lead, the lead, everybody has got uh, their own interests. And you as a leader, you have a bigger responsibility of understanding your own uh, interests, whether they are personal or communal or whatever they are. And given the interest that you have for yourself and for the people that you're leading, it will help you know as you share, because you will be sharing. Like, for example, when I, you know, uh, I'm leading, I usually try to be as much as possible, as open as possible. But am I open to everybody? Of course not. Why? Because I have, you know, we, as long as you share with people, you'll see who, who, buys your, who buys your idea and who doesn't buy your idea and people who may not buy your idea because they want to be in your position. So that one becomes your enemy number one who would want to see you fail. And those are the people who might even advance a serious propaganda against you. But if you choose to give them audience, then you fail even completely. The thing is, how do you select people who will stand with you by you all the time? 
And uh, it, it all de depends on how you create the trust and the networks that you engage yourselves with. But importantly, are your mentors. If you select serious mentors and those mentors are people of good quality and uh, mannerism and all that, they will always tell you as it is in the in the in the in the in the in the famous uh phrase that you know telling the king is naked like they will tell you the truth that that is an idiotic idea you're trying to bring on board that is not the way you do that is you know you're headed the wrong direction people who can tell you the serious truth without blinking those are the people that you need around you and they are not judgy because again and I know nowadays people have become very sensitive to things and uh, you know you 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 are afraid of being hurt by what other people say, but when you become a leader in my position, you have to develop what I call thick skin. You will be able to shock, absorb many things, filter them through. Remember, it's part of the burden that you have to understand to be able to deliver whatever you need to deliver. Again, as I said, it is not a must that you are there; it is a privilege. So you have an option of calling it off. If you find that you know the multitude is becoming a big thing, you let it go. But again, as I said, winners never quit. And so, uh, you know, the issue of trust again that is very personal. As I said, you know, geographically, you know, there are people, you know, because people, as I said, people have got interests, and that is what you need to understand. And the people you bring on board, you have to vet them, and that's why you need to take your friends. For, you need to go with your friends for um party see the way they behave amongst our people that's why you need sometimes to to, to tell a, your friend a secret that is not a secret and see how long it lasts with them you know i'm not saying you start now putting your friends into a spreadsheet and trying to okay you pass that you didn't pass that one no you judge them whole wholeheartedly you know in wholesome go with them to see because what i do sometimes is you know when i need to groom somebody i do bring with them to a serious meeting I'm invited to a high-end meeting and I request, can I please bring plus one? And if they allow me, I pick somebody that I think I need to groom to become the next person I would want to be with. And I bring with them there and I see how they behave. Can they withstand the pressure of being in such an environment? Maybe it's a business corporate meeting. Maybe it's a meeting with um, high security officers, you know, institutional leaders. I bring them with me. And I see how they are, uh, you know, and that's why I, I think I'm grooming because that's how some of my uh, leaders groomed me. Some of my leaders, the way they groomed me is that they sent me to their trusted leaders. They would write an email to them, say, I'm sending a young man your way. Please receive him and listen to him. And I would go and find I'm well received. We have a long talk conversation. And from there, it's upon me and upon them to think of kind of relationship that you're going to craft from there. If they, like the old people that I've shown you there, I didn't know them from the beginning. It was through the connection of people that I have been to. This knows that, that knows that. And by the end of the day, I find myself um, with these people. And depending on how I carry myself, because I'm very organic and very natural, it, it goes, you know, people want to keep uh, listening and hearing and knowing what I'm doing. And I think it is because of the trust that comes. You do not have to force it. People have to see it. And I say, as you create your network, test your friends. Some people are not your friends. Sometimes, and sometimes you want to know you have uh, friends. You know, I want people to differentiate between two things. Between knowing so many people, like, for example, I am in, in contact of a thousand people. I know so many people. But how many of those are my friends? There is a difference of knowing so many people and having friends. You have to differentiate between the two. Knowing many people in your phone book and having friends that can help, can come at your aid at any point. Thank you so much, Peter. Can you hear me? Yeah, uh, thank okay, you, Dr. Okay. Mani. Thank you so much for that. Uh, you did justice to that, and I can um, assert to that. Thank you very much.
Um, um, Duncan Omondi, uh, you are up next. Your hand has been raised for long. So I'll be taking uh, your question next. I'll allow you to put on your mic. And Edison Masureka will come up next after you. So Duncan Omondi, you have your floor now. Please speak up. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you, Peter. Thank you for, for the opportunity to to you know, make a contribution to this. Um, it's not a question, but it's more of um, I thank you not. We want to thank uh, Dr. Kimani because I'm also from Kenya, and we've listened to to Dr. Kimani. Dr. Kimani is a personal friend, and uh, he I'd say that he he's doing a lot for us um, as a country. You know, taking care of of the young ones from from this part of the continent and sometimes they go out there and there is no one to, to, to care for them. And Dr. Kimani has always been through for that in Vancouver and we just want to thank him. And again, uh, I want to express gratitude by how he has you know, handled this, this, this topic of leadership. We, we are really learning a lot and we are learning to be the leaders of tomorrow. Thank you, thank you so much. All right, thank you so much, Duncan. Your comments and compliments were well taken. I believe uh, Dr. Uh, Kimani is in high spirit here as um, he listened to you. Uh, yeah, I, you. I call him, I call him Danoti. Duncan Danoti. Otieno. Wow. He's one of the right. young chaps that we have in Kenya. Thank you so much, Duncan, for being here. Thank you. All right, so thank you so much. Um, right now we're on to um, Edison Masareka. Edison Masareka, you're next. Can you put your mic on and speak up? Thank you. All right, Edison, are you there? Okay, if Edison is not there, I think uh, uh, we might have to take the next on the line. Um, Go Vision from South Sudan. Uh, we might have to have you on this uh, question Hello. and answer session. All right. Hello. Oh, Master Eka, you're on. All right, go, on, go ahead. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I want to thank Dr. Kimani for such a remarkable presentation. My name is Edison Master Eka from Uganda. I am a university student here. Uh, my question is about uh, work-life balance. Uh, personally, I have made quite a number of strides in my leadership journey in at a university, in a community, I am in the guild and I serve in quite a number of leadership roles in church and in the community and at a university. And sometimes it's quite a lot of work to create a balance between uh, different leadership roles. Uh, like, like, like uh, at student level, you have to balance the books, you have to balance your personal life, the leadership roles, maybe you're in a dating relationship, you have a family, and very many life aspects. So I want to inquire from Dr. Kimani how we can create a balance between all these, so that by the end of the day, we are not overwhelmed, we don't break down. Um, and then the other thing is about mentorship. I have had the opportunity to be mentored by quite a number of people. Um, but I, I realize there are some mentors who want you to be what they want you to become, not what you want. Some, sometimes they want to drive you to a direction they have taken themselves and they don't give you the chance to discover yourself on your own by standing aside and guiding you to become what you want to become without them leading you the direction they have walked themselves. I also wanted to hear Dr. Chimani's comments on that. And then my last question, goes to the organizers the, the, um, about the certificates because you say the certificates will be given to everyone who attends all the sessions and I want to know the criteria for assessing that um, and then how are you going to record our names because like I've seen some people have not actually used their full names in here how is that going to be done thank you very much uh, thank you so much uh, Edison for that um, uh, you know wonderful contribution and your questions. So one is about uh, how do you balance all these responsibilities, and especially if you're a student 
And I think that is one of the reasons why we're here today, uh, you know, to, to let you know that, you know, about uh, balancing all these issues. So one thing I would say is about uh, giving priority to what matters to you. For example, if you're in, a, in an institution, one of the things you need to understand, why am I there? Why am I here? So that one becomes the big, uh, you know, foundation, whatever you will do next uh, for whatever you're going to do uh, moving forward. And that's what will lead you in making the priorities. You know, my academic and, uh, you know, becomes, you know, key in that. And of course, uh, you know, understanding if I become, if I involve myself in a relationship at this particular time, to what extent can I get myself involved in that relationship? And, uh, you know, how, you know, can it, how will it help? How can it, how will it help my first agenda of being in school? Because I know, uh, you know, nowadays I have seen many people, even those that I do teach, some of the, they get into some funny things that they, 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 I wouldn't call them relationships. I would call them things that are not very helpful, whereby you are a young man, but a young lady also expect you to provide for them. You're both being provided by your parents. You don't work in heaven and come to earth to, to study, no. So some expectations uh, that must be put in place, or you're a young man, depending on a young girl who is also being provided by your parents. That relationship is not balanced at all. So, and that's why I said you have to draw a line of priorities. What is it that I want to achieve from here? Because other things are privileges that you get along the way. So it's like, how do these other things that I have help me to achieve whatever is the objective of where I am today? If you're in school, know what, why you are there. If you're in a, maybe in a church and that is your main place, why are you there? How will other things help you to become successful in that what you're doing that is how i will help you to balance out uh, the thing so if it is not helping you to achieve then it's a burden and it seems you cannot be able to handle with it at this particular time you can suspend it to come to it later in life because some some of the things there are so many things that we would want to do but again we cannot do them at the same time we have to give them stages just like a way a small baby grows they must grow in steps because again, if you jump one step, people will notice this is the first thing. It is, not, it is not doing the way it is supposed to be done. So you suspend things and that's why you have to have a priority list so that at least you do things systematically. That will help you to balance that life uh, uh, in college. So you do not dive yourself too much and you cannot be able to swim. You need to know whether you need to swim or you need to float along with other people and be there so that at least you don't lose out. I know there is a fear of missing out, Fogo, but uh, don't worry. Uh, yes, I have also seen mentors who would want to mentor you to become a mini them, a small, a photocopy of them. That is not a mentor. That's a photocopy machine. A mentor is somebody who will work with you in achieving your dreams. You know, and I think that's why I send people, you must understand when somebody is using you to realize their dreams. So means, that means you are not dreaming. You are dreaming somebody else's dream and implementing it. So you will never become yourself. You always become a puppet of another person. I know sometimes it is, and that is a person that you cannot be with. And I know that is now what we call exploitation. Because you have your own destiny and you must live by it. So how do then other people want to uh, help you how do you and that's why i said when you're selecting these mentors you have to be very careful who will guide me and that's why i have so many of them they are those in academia and you know they tell me and uh things i listen but i make my own decisions finally there are those in uh in uh, legal spheres there are those in political spheres there are those you know across the board and i listen to most of them and uh, i do what makes me feel like you know it is building my brand it is building my identity that's what i would say edison for that and that's a very good question on behalf of the young men and women of the continent and thank you so much and i hope uganda is uh doing great yeah i also want to talk about the other question um hello my name is Sof. you remember me yes. from the first time <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, I'm part of the organizing team. So what we are going to have you do, we are going to expect you to tell the truth and we will have you report yourself if you finish. We are not marking everybody's attendance. I mean, I know in Africa, we are used to um, giving people attendance, watching them and all that, but we are not doing that. I am trusting you to say the truth. If you attended the three sections or the four sections, you should tell us. And there are important questions I see that I want you, Mr. Kimani, to quickly there talk about. We are way out of time, but I think we'll give um, till 10 minutes after and then we'll finish. So we just have like seven minutes more. I want you to talk about tribalism. Somebody mentioned it and Godfatherism. I, I, I find that this is something that shows up in almost every African country. So tell us how you think politically mentorship is a good thing or a bad thing, and then talk about how our problems of tribe conflict around, along tribal lines show up, especially in African countries. Thank you so much, my friend, Anko. So for that, um... Uh, input and uh, the two questions, you know, about the political mentorship. Um, one, you know, anything that we do in this universe is all political. Mention it, it's all political. And then it therefore becomes a responsibility of each and every one of us to take part in it, in making it the decision. And that's why we should be able to come up uh, with programs that will not that will prepare young minds to become responsible uh, politicians in future. Because even at home, we have politics happening. They will you will hear somebody say that is cheap politics or that is politics in home at home with your father, your mother, your spouses, whatever you hear. You know that is whatever it is. So it is important for people to be aware. However. Being aware and being knowledgeable about civic responsibilities, civic duties, civic duties, understanding what is your role within this, because we cannot all become leaders. We have to have leaders and we have to have the multitude that is being the, by the leaders. But it, it, that person comes from this group of people. But if everybody was to be aware of their responsibilities within that uh, setup, they will be able to make the right decisions and they'll make everybody's lives better. And they'll be able to make political decisions that are informed and that are good. And that now segues to the next question about tribal. I know this is, a, and I think, as I said initially, we are being tormented by the legacies of colonization. Uh, I know even before colonization or whatever slave trade or whatever happened to our dear continent, you know, people still lived in, you know, in their own setups, in their own settings. And uh, do, do they have these uh, animosities uh, amongst themselves? Of course they did. But with the time, issues have become crafted in a way that people would want to continue manipulating others irrespective of whether they trust them or not. And the only thing that has been found to work is when people get into trouble and they run into their cocoons, tribal cocoons. And we have now been, you know, we have been now been um, uh, conditioned to think of my person, my people. We have been forced to make small nations even within our clans. And those are in so many ways, it is important, you know, as an Africa, you know, when we talked about our founding fathers talked about Pan-Africanism, you know, having no boundaries, uh, having to share things, you know, having to have this freedom. But now the challenge has become that the ideologies of colonization, whereby, you know, it was divide and rule kind of a thing. You find that people are trying to be comfortable in their own tribes, in their own tribesmen. But the problem comes even further. Even those tribesmen that you would want to fight for and die for, if, for example, they go and get all the monies they can get from the government, that money does not belong to the government. That money belongs to you 
as a taxpayer or your parents as taxpayers. But what do these people do with that money? They eat or they squander that money with their own families. They send their children abroad. But when they are brought to the book, you are the number one person yelling to the top of your lungs that these people are against our tribe. That is blindfolded. That is blind following. That is stupidity. Tribe is there to identify yourself because that is where you belong. But when it comes to issues, national matters, that is where you draw the line. Because if somebody is going to, to, to benefit from, you know, from proceeds of corruption, independently, individually, I'm not saying that they steal and they share with you, no. Because again, other people will come for your neck as well. I'm saying, if we, and we go to the previous question, if people were to understand their civic responsibilities within our countries, the issue of tribe will not come along. A good example was the country Tanzania, when, you know, under the leadership of uh, Mwalimu Julius Kambarege Nyerere. There wasn't that nonsense of tribal. And when they tried to introduce the issue of tribal, he refused. And he introduced the idea of Ujama, although we know Ujama did not um, uh, thrive, but it helped. Although nowadays, it is, you know, the issue of tribe is creeping into, you, you, uh, not Uganda, but uh, into uh, Tanzania. But we can see it's a, it's, a, it's, an, it's a place that we can emulate ourselves into. So importantly, to answer that question is we understanding our responsibility within our jurisdiction. If we understand, like, I try as much as possible to tell people in Kenya, because if I come from the largest tribe in Kenya, is there anything that is there for me to be proud of other than being many, other than having other people think that, you know, because the leaders that we put there from my, my place, they have squandered or they have led people astray. Is there anything to, that is benefiting me as Kimani? Is there? Because uh, people from my tribe were leaders, but they did the bad things that they did and everybody else is crying. Am I not crying? I am. Is my mother crying? She is. Is my father rotating in his grave? He is. Why? Because of that stupid mentality of tribe. We have to be people, you know, come together. And that's why I'm so thankful of this kind of a setup because we have to undo that mentality of my person, my people, when it comes to protecting thugs. Because once a person does something, especially with national interest coffers, it does not only affect our neighbors, but it affects all of us. And the decisions that we also do make, they do not only affect us today as a people, it affects all of us. And that is why we in Africa are all affected. Because, and I was reading this book by Malimu Julius Nyerere about the African philosophy. And he was talking about um, uh, the AU and why AU sometimes is so useless. That is the African Union. And he was saying that, the African leaders, and I'm giving political uh, ideology here, the African leaders, when they go to these meetings, they know who amongst them is corrupt. They know amongst them who is bloodthirsty. They know amongst them who is touching money from their countries abroad, but they will never say it because everybody wants to do that. Therefore, how can we then eliminate this nonsense? Is by getting people like yourself and myself going to the village, as Danotti has mentioned, and trying to educate people in the easiest way possible we can and tell them, if somebody is doing this, he's not doing it for their tribe. He's doing it for the whole nation, the whole country, and everybody is going to suffer. If you put oil in a river, it's not only the people, it's, again, we have to embrace the idea and the ideology of Utu or Ubuntu the philosophy of being human and learning the interconnectedness of the whole nation, of the whole continent, of the whole world. We are all interconnected. Today, if we do something that is going to eliminate the bees, those, those small insects that make honey, we're in big trouble. They are very important in our ecosystem, in pollinating, we will have a big problem. If we think that the trees are not important because some people want to sell them and get, the in, we have to understand the interconnectedness of all of us and understanding the philosophy of being Utu. 
you are because I am, and I am because you are. If we understand that through the civic education, we'll be able to come out of this uh, quagmire. We are in of tribal Kakul. Because I believe in some people, even in you know in Kenya, you know people think you know if you do not, you you can only get a position if you know somebody. And once enough, you are a woman, you can only get something or some position if you know somebody who can propel your agenda through other dubious means. We need to get out of that nonsense. And this is by educating our people in the most local way possible, letting them understand in their local dialects. And that's why now those local languages are important because again, not everybody has those colonialistic languages that they can explain to their grandmothers or not in making their civic responsibilities and duties the right way. We can fix it. Having scrutinizing the leaders, whether they are leaders in the churches, we have seen what is happening in Kenya. Some stupid leaders, and I'm sorry, I'm using the word stupid quite often here, but uh, I think that's what it is, you know, uh, leading your multitude into the wrong direction and getting them to die, whatever it is, you know, you trust them, but trusting the wrong people, you know, the leader, it is the same thing that should happen right from the village to the national. It does not have to be your person. It has to be a person with a vision and somebody who is ambitious and with the qualities that we have mentioned that can be in the leadership position. You do not have to come from the family. And one day, I believe, will come when we shall overthrow all these cartels in the names of royal families and these dynasties and all that. We, the masses, have the power and we can do that through the ballot. Uncle Sob and Peter and Bati. All right, thanks so much, uh, Dr. Kimani. That was a whole lot. Uh, I think you addressed the issues of tribalism and leadership and how that you have to draw the line when it comes to civic rights. And I actually love the notes you started on talking about the civic responsibilities of a leader. And um, tribalism hints at that uh, point when it comes to um, um, observing your civic duties. Thank you so much, Dr. Kimani. It's been a whole um, session with you, and I want to appreciate you for your time and your resources you've put up there for us. Uh, thank you so much for taking us through the timeline of your leadership activities and the skills which you've garnered all through the process. And I believe someone here right now from wherever in the world joining us on this call has learned one of two things on uh, becoming a leader and how to uh, connect more and how to um, explore and um, implement your network in um, becoming a great leader. Thank you so much. Today's um, session has been a great one so far, and um, I trust uh, God for the um, sessions to follow. And I know that uh, more justice will be done. And I'm imploring um, Dr. Kimani now for people that still have questions that might not get answered on this uh, session because time is not very much on our side. I think I've seen a Go Vision from South Sudan. His own has been up for a while now. Go Vision, we're sorry. We might not be taking your question in this session, but I will be imploring Dr. Kimani to maybe give us um, a contact address or somewhere where we could um, um, address these questions that are actually logging um, for maybe further answers after tonight's session. Um, Dr. Kimani, is there any provision for that? Uh, giving my, yeah, giving my contacts. Sure, that's fine. Oh, um, I think. Yeah, uh, usually I'm on Bluetooth. Okay, sir. <laughs> I mean, I'm on Twitter. I'm on, uh, yeah, mostly on Twitter we can chat and you can also send, I, would, I think I'll write my email here um, and also my phone number and uh, we'll, we'll continue from there. All right, sir. So participants, thank you for wherever you are calling in from. Uh, all your questions are noted and um, will be directed to Dr. Kimani on the provided address. If you are yet to join us on the WhatsApp uh, page, you would uh, need to get um, a request. And um, I would in implore every participant here who's been with us through the uh, length of this session to uh, kindly update on their mail to check for updates on the following sessions. We would love to have you stick with us throughout the three day sessions and the four day gala events. And more importantly, I want to remind us of our uh, impact fund and our hot seats entails. You having to prepare your um, 
your uh, proposals for leadership um, events and activities you're planning for your community and get them ready. So on the last day of the uh, boot camp, we'll be requesting for them and the three winners will match and uh, the fund for the winners will be um, disbursed. Uh, thank you so much, participants, for joining wherever you're calling from. I hope it's been a wonderful session with you on this first day of uh, 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 PFF's um, International Leadership Bootcamp. I want to uh, implore you so that you get more resources uh, like this from PFF to follow us up on um, our social media handles, which will be provided on our um, what uh, on our WhatsApp page, and um, you get more updates and. You can do well to engage our content and share your experience on um, this particular session with Dr. Kimani on our social handles. You can share your um, comments, your experience with Dr. Kimani and your comments and concerns about uh, the first session so that that can get us we had for the sessions to follow. Thank you so much, Dr. Kimani, once again. I really appreciate your time, sir. Thank you so much for that insightful session. Uh, God bless. All right. Um, I believe um, it's uh, been a, a smooth ride. Um, this is where we'll be um, drawing the curtain for today's session and the first day of um, International Leadership Bootcamp 2023 for PFF. And uh, we'll be, Dr. Kimani will be dropping his mic as well. He's done a lot today of justice to the topic for today. I want you to keep your heads up for the session to follow tomorrow and the day after and do not miss any of the sessions so as to uh, bag your certificates and get all the virtues and values you would get from this leadership bootcamp. I can assure you, you might be paying for this at a huge cost and um, I'm sure this is just coming to you and falling at your feet for, for free. So you want to make use of this advantage and get other leaders and uh, people that are aspiring to be leaders in their communities to join up in this uh, wonderful uh, boot camp. Thank you so much, Dr. Kimani. Thank you so much, participants, for joining. Uh, thanks to the facilitators. Thank you to PFF. And uh, I say, this is where we draw the curtain. Thank you for joining. I say bye to everyone for now. Bye, Dr. Kimani. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, sir.